In this movie, we want to take you through the range of functions and tools available in our IRA for Rhino plugin, designed for controlling the lighting system within your Rhino scenes. For this exercise, we will use this simple enclosed space with windows mounted in the back wall, chairs, and a table with various items placed on it, including an arrangement of diamonds on a display pad. But first of all, we need to change the rendering mode for our perspective viewport from shaded to live and continuous IRA rendering. You will immediately notice that the space is already lit to a very low level by the three rectangular strip lights mounted into the ceiling which will help us better view the available light range's functions. To access the primary IRA light source types, we need to click on the IRA Lights tab. And we'll start here by inserting a spotlight into our scene. We firstly click on our selected construction plane to set an aim point and then drag and click again to set our initial beam diameter. Then we again drag the mouse to set the light source point. Now, using the gumball control, we drag this light into a position above the center of our table. Next, opening the IRA lighting dialog, we can see our new spotlight listed. Here we increase the intensity value to 100. Note the almost immediate increase in the illumination value at the center of the tabletop. Again, we use the gumball control to quickly tilt the spotlight beam to the left and reposition this light source to better illuminate the center of the tabletop, noting the corresponding movement of the light beam as we do this. Now we move our perspective camera to give us a better view of the tabletop and the light distribution from our spotlight. Using the IRA lighting dialog, we widen the beam angle to 20 degrees and view the resulting change on our tabletop. Then we narrow the beam angle down to 10 degrees. The other way we can adjust the spotlight tilt angle and beam direction is to select the location node and drag as needed without changing the light target point, as you can see here. We can also move the entire spotlight by selecting the center or dolly node and dragging this to a new location. And if we just want to move the spotlight aim point, we can select and drag the target node to wherever we want and again view the illumination impact of any of these changes in our iWay viewport. Now we delete our spotlight to move on to the next IRA light type, the point light, which we can create by simply dragging and dropping this light symbol into our scene, and then use the gumball control to drag this light to our chosen position within our scene. Here we again place our point light above the center of our table. Then we open the IRA lighting dialog and change the intensity value to 1000 candelas. This value is clearly far too bright, so we adjust this value down to 200 candelas, which now looks more appropriate. As you can see here, the point light is a point source that emits light equally in all directions and is a most useful light type to invisibly provide surrounding illumination in a scene that otherwise has insufficient light coming from other light sources or reflecting off the surrounding surfaces. Next we move on to the directional light type, which we simply drag into our scene and rotate the arrowhead to set the direction of this light source. Again, in the lighting dialog panel with our new directional light selected, we increase the intensity value to 1000. A directional light is a large parallel light source always located outside of the scene model extents and pointed in the direction of the arrowhead. This light type is often used to simulate the effect of sunlighting. We can move the location of directional light symbol as many times as we like, but the lighting distribution throughout the model space always remains unchanged. It's only when we rotate the angle of the directional light arrowhead where we can see a change in the light distribution as we see here. Next, we insert a rectangular light type by first drawing the side length and then dragging to the side to form our rectangular light source which is located on the horizontal construction plane at floor level. With our rectangular light, you can see a small arrow which indicates the side of the rectangle that will emit the light output. We select this light and move it about halfway up our room space. Then we increase the intensity value to 4000, where we can see immediately the effect of our new rectangular light on the surrounding room surfaces. 
Further moving this light around, we can see the changing lighting impact of our rectangular light source within our model scene. Now back to our IRA lights toolbar. We next click on linear light and draw a single line to set the length and orientation of this light type. Then in the lighting panel, we increase the intensity value to 1000 and again drag our new light closer to the center of the space. But to better show the lighting effect here, we increase the intensity value to 4000. You can now see how this light emits light in all directions around the center axis of this linear light type. But we also increase this light output by simply increasing the cross-section dimension of our linear light. Here we increase the radius from 12.7mm to 50mm, which considerably increases both the linear light surface area and, as you can see here, the amount of light emitted. Now we move and rotate our new linear light to show the changing lighting effect within our scene. And for our final light object type, we select and insert an IES light by clicking a location within our scene, which creates an arrowhead that sets both the aim direction and mounting point for this light type. IES stands for Illuminating Engineering Society, which is a lighting industry standard file format for describing the distribution of light from real world lighting sources. IES profiles will shape the light distribution to match the much more complicated output of actual lighting fixtures. Using the gumball control, we can tilt, move, rotate, and make copies of our IES light, just like any other object in our scene. Now that we've finished exploring all the available light object types, you may have already noticed that there have been no visible light source areas. This is primarily due to the need to keep the IRA lighting tools consistent with the similar built-in lighting functions within Rhino to maintain ease of use and lighting system flexibility. However, if you do need to show a visible light source area with your light types, then you can easily create the geometry of the light source area, apply an add emission material, and then group this with your selected light type. This is similar to what we've done for the rectangular strips that you can see on the ceiling of our model space, which we will show you in more detail later in this movie. Next, clicking on the environment tab in our lighting dialog, we'll show you two other methods for lighting your scene. We start by selecting image based, which inserts a surrounding 360 degree HDR image, where the stored luminance value of each pixel in that image will be used to accurately illuminate your scene. We can easily change this environment image by clicking on the large bitmap button and load another HDR file. So here we choose the Dresden station, nighttime image. But as the relative brightness of our HDR environment is quite low, we can adjust this by increasing the intensity value to 100. Now we can clearly see the light contribution of our new surrounding environment. And as we move our camera for a closer view of our model interior, we can see the impact of both the changing source color and light value of the surrounding environment image throughout this space. We should also point out here that when you want to produce your final production images, you do have the option of masking the background environmental image itself and having just the environment lighting contribution visible, which can be very useful for product only shots. The other environment lighting type we can use is the sun sky system, as we can see being switched on here. This sun sky system actually utilizes a complete physically accurate 3D sky dome model which provides highly realistic daytime illumination of our scene. We can control the settings here. Firstly via a simple sun azimuth and altitude control dialog, or alternatively we can just uncheck the manual control option to give us access to the full set of daylight time and site location parameters. But here we will just go back to the manual control option and change the azimuth and altitude values and watch the resulting lighting environment update. Now let's look at the rectangular strips mounted on the ceiling. As we touched on a little earlier, another method for lighting our scene is to use the add emission library material and apply this to any selected surface elements in our model which is exactly what we've done here. 
We've created a custom material by selecting the Add Emission Library material and applying this to each of the ceiling mounted rectangular strips, then renaming this scene material to Strip Emitters. But as we can see, the black appearances of these surfaces, we need to significantly increase the intensity value of this material. So here we increase this value from 100 to 200,000 lumens per square meter. And now we can clearly see the lighting contribution from these strip lights, even in our bright daylight conditions. So now we'll use a combination of IRA light types to show how we can try and quickly light both our room and the diamond arrangement on display at the center of the table. With our daylight environment and the three strip lights already illuminating our scene, we first add a spotlight and position this over the center of our table display. Then we manipulate and copy the various parameters of the spotlight to try and better bring out the intricate optical detail of our diamond arrangement display. And we finish here by showing some great examples of what can be achieved by combining Rhino's excellent modeling capabilities with iRay's amazing MDL physically accurate material definition system and its extensive lighting tool sets. For more information on the iRay for Rhino plugin and to download a 30 day fully functional free trial, please visit www.irayplugins.com.